What's going on, everybody? Another one, everyone hates Tesla. Public enemy number two. Elon Musk, as always, nothing new. We're going to read through this. As Musk lifts humanity to the highest level, the left brand him public enemy number two. Let's jump right into today's video. Did you hear about the amazing space history just made? Two women traveled further from Earth than any woman ever had. Now, I don't care if they're women or male, but whatever. Elon Musk made that happen. Of course, the fact that he is behind that historic first is likely why you didn't hear about it. Democrats, the far left, and most of the liberal media loved Elon Musk until they didn't. Once he bought Twitter, turned it into X, and made it clear that he was against much of the censorship they had been pushing and for free speech they opposed. Many on the left and in the media turned against him with vengeance. Now, you righties didn't like him neither just because he had EVs versus your gas guzzling ice vehicles. Almost overnight, Musk became public enemy number two. So he just switched sides, okay? Because the last time y'all saw him, conservatives and rights, et cetera, as an enemy against you because he had EVs and he was with climate change, et cetera. He would obviously never reach the number one position since the left has carved the former president, Donald Trump's name for that title. But as Musk also dared to endorse Trump for president, he has a lock on number two forevermore. The often unhinged hostility directed at Musk by some on the left is disturbing again just a few weeks or years ago the left seemingly wanted to erect statues to musk as they sang his praise in those of his companies tesla and spacex now aside from hurling ugly insults at him and many on the left also want to cancel spacex tesla and hated x and even arrest musk can you believe that two years ago I put out a book titled The 56 Liberty Lessons from Those Who Risked All to Sign the Declaration of Independence. This is a book that this gentleman had wrote. I read the sample. It seems pretty good up until this point. The sole purpose of the book was to protect our founding fathers from the threat of cancellation from some on the left. While discussing the book at the time, I often equated Musk with our founding fathers. Elon Musk, founding fathers, why? Because back in 1776, the vast majority of the wealthy American colonialists sided with the tyrannical British crown. They did not want to rock the boat, rock the boat, Aaliyah. They did not want to risk their wealth and their privilege. Me neither. They were happy to be useful idiots of the time for those robbing them of their own rights and freedoms. On the other side were the founding fathers, most especially those who literally put their lives on the line to sign the Declaration of Independence. Many were the equivalent of billionaires of today. They could have kept silent like most of the wealthy and gone along with the crown, but they did not. Each looked himself in the mirror and asked the two most important questions of their life. Pretty hard that you can tell that they did that, but okay. Quote, if not me, who? And if not now, when? End quote. And because they did, the United States of America was created. And like those billionaires of 1776, Musk could have kept going along to get along as the wealthiest human on the planet. He needed for nothing and had luxuries at his disposal. But then, like our founding fathers, at some point, Musk as well as Donald Trump and RFK Jr., okay, whatever, also asked himself those two questions as he witnessed the rise of cancel culture and the elimination of free speech. What is amazing about Musk, whom I have never met or spoken with, is that he has so many different interests and is blazing life-changing trails with all of them. As he fights to protect free speech, he is also desperately trying to figure out a way to move humans off the planet in a permanent way to save humanity. To that very quest, after NASA recently announced it was tracking the potential Earth-killing asteroid, didn't hear about that one, 
Musk posted on X, quote, one of these days, a large comet will hit Earth and destroy almost all life, as happened many times in the past. Either become a space-faring civilization or get deleted, end quote. Part of the drive was on spectacular display. Recently, SpaceX launched a four-person civilian crew on a trailblazing mission into Earth's Van Allen radiation belt. It can't be stressed enough how jaw-dropping and incredible that mission was. Back in the day, I authored a book, this guy, he authored a book about 12 men who walked on the moon. I worked space issues for the Pentagon, and I worked as a consultant to NASA and the space shuttle team. Because of that background, I have followed the adventures of SpaceX since day one. I know that what Musk and SpaceX and the courageous four-person crew just accomplished is deeply significant to Musk's ultimate goal of getting humanity to Mars and beyond. And I think it's a technological achievement. So shout out to those people. This latest SpaceX launch dubbed, quote, Polaris Dawn, end quote, set a number of firsts. It was the first all-private citizen space launch, the first commercial spacewalk, the first all-civilian spacewalk, and again, it marked the furthest any woman has ever flown in space. Beyond that, it was the furthest humanity has flown from Earth in more than 50 years. Elon Musk and his once-in-a-century mind is behind all that. Now, most of you guys are worried about tweets and BS, but let me continue. While NASA continues to destroy itself from within with its focus on DEI, that's diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, right? The terrible stuff, not merit-based, but identity-based. Identity politics and climate change before all. Musk has taken the lead in space. The left can and will hate on him all they want because of his fight against their censorship. Now, remember, the right, you guys hated him because of his climate change positions. For free speech and because he dared to endorse the evil public enemy number one, Trump. But decades and even centuries from now, I believe history will record Musk as the driving force who permanently lifted humanity into the promise and protection of space. I think this was a very interesting article. And in on our installments of Everyone Hates Tesla, I assure you that everyone hates Elon Musk. He is the public enemy number two. But in my book, as far as geniuses go, he is doing quite well. Space-faring civilization. Will we get to space or will we not? I think like Elon Musk and other people who work at SpaceX are essential to the fabric of not only innovation in humanity, but also the United States of America. Thanks for signing the Declaration of Independence to those 56 men who decided to take up arms and fight for their independence. It could have been the knee. Now, whether you're on the right or the left, it doesn't concern me. The fact of the matter is that Elon Musk has massive amounts of accomplishments, but some people believe us to be fanboys and cults, regardless of the rockets that are reusable, regardless of the innovation in EVs. Regardless of many things that Elon Musk and his crew completes, people still don't get it. But that's okay. Everybody's not meant to get it. Everybody's not meant to understand. Everybody's not meant to go where we're going. We're reaching the stars, baby. And if you're smart enough, you could be a part of that adventure. Shout outs to everybody at SpaceX. Much respect and love goes out to Elon Musk. Everyone hates Tesla. SpaceX, we see it stalled. EV1 is go to continue. That structure you see there is... For egress. <laughs> You know, SpaceX, back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. At home, we all have a lot of work to do, but in space, the work is being done. Everyone hates Tesla. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. It's electric. Woogie, woogie, woogie.